Yeah, I want to reference a video that's not mine. Actually, I don't know. Who, I forgot the name of the channel, but I I know the video was put out a couple week, years ago. It's about uh, World War III 2017, right? And I know you're going to think, ah, another one of those drama videos. Well, nobody knows exactly when that's going to happen anyway. But I just want to tell you that um, the scenarios are correct. It's, it's by Joel Skozen. Um, and most of the stuff I agree with this guy. Um, I'm quite well aware of the false divide between the East and the West to create conflict, to um, bring about a world government. That's been in plans for a long period of time. Um, and also, you know, what, you know, some things he mentioned um, that I knew about many years ago from the former ambassador to from Poland to Japan who defected in 1981, uh, Zdzisław Rares. He was the Polish ambassador to Japan. He defected to the United States in 1981. He, I read a lot of his articles extensively. Um, he pointed out very much that um, Lech Walesa, the head of the Solidarity Movement, was um, led was opposition led by the KGB from the top in Poland. Um, the dissolution of the Soviet Union was was a long term plan. Now I'm not getting at you know Russian fear or being you know, Russian phobic. What I'm telling you is, and you know, Joel says it very well, and I, it's, this is, it's, it's like he's saying something I already know, that there's three major powers, um, and you can leave out the European Union because they're pretty much impotent, um, the United States, Russia, and China. <clears throat> and um, China was built up recently by the United States with, uh, you know, K Nixon and Kissinger and detente. And uh, actually, even Russia was too. Like, it's, um, believe it or not, I mean, if you're Russian, you're hearing this, you're probably gonna get pissed off about that. But uh, not saying something against Russia, but I'm saying is that during World War II, um, Russian military was greatly aided by the West, money-wise too, and with technology. Um, the whole Cold War after World War II was a big farce. Uh, NATO is a big farce. It's a it's a move towards uh, global government, but there is, in what he's saying is correct. There's three competing powers, major competing powers, that are looking for globalism. And I know people in Russia might get mad at me for saying this, but even Putin is looking for globalism. It's like they all are. Everybody is. It's the West. It's Putin and it's China, uh, all on their own terms. Those are the only three big players. Everybody else is a relatively smaller player. But Joel also says, and I know this is a fact, you know, and I know this from common sense too. What you're going to really do is take out, when there's a war, it'll be mainly taken out the military. They're not going to like nuke New York City per se. I don't think they will. I don't think so either. Or Washington, D.C., maybe, well, maybe Washington. But most every place else, no, because. The real estate is worth too much money. Um, but what they could do, and what Joel didn't mention, was that they can use biological weapons. You know, you want to keep the hard infrastructure in place, but you don't want the people there. You want them all dead, you know. Now, one of the reasons, I haven't really been getting going on this channel too much lately, you know, as, as much as I wanted to. And there's a lot of stuff I want to put out, but it takes time. And... Um, but I want to tell you, it, I love this video, he, and I know this video was actually a couple years old. It's an hour long. And I'm not going to rehash everything in it, but I'm quite well aware of a lot of the games that go on and the shrewd power struggles, struggles behind the scenes. And nobody really knows where the hell it's going exactly. Everybody's got their plans, but nobody knows for sure. I do know that in most cases... In the alternative media, the big guys that have been around a long time, they're fake shills, most of them. Um, a lot of the other ones are just looking for drama for profit. Even if they're real, they're looking like, hey folks, I can tell you about, look what I found, and you know, big deal. Um, I'm going to tell you, everybody that's in, and you know, this, I really, you know, the way I look at it, I'm not too much against a global power, as long as it's based upon like the way the Confederacy would have wanted, like in other words, a lot of autonomy to the regions and the states. 
like, you know, if the United States was, say, a power, maybe it needs to be the Northeast is a, is a regional government, maybe the, the South is Dixie is an regional government, the Midwest, and maybe the, the Far West, right, and the Southwest or whatever. Um, and I'm not saying under the global elite, screw them. But I'm saying is where there's a lot of regional autonomy. Very, 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 in other words, the only way you do this, too, no taxation. And, you know, that's one of the points I'm going to bring up in this video that Joel didn't bring up. The way you can bring down a new world order is, you know, I, I hate to say use the word avoid taxation, but maybe that's what it is. Let's say do it in a legal way. But I also told you about and everybody's buying stuff online. They're trying to collect, collect sales tax online. You're actually supposed to pay that at the end of the year. If you didn't pay the sales tax, you're supposed to, I think you're supposed to pay a use tax and fill out a form. I don't think anybody does that. Um, they're cracking down on that like Amazon is. But, you know, I'd say to hell with Amazon. But that's one way you could kind of starve the beast. Um, anything you could do on your own. Grow food. Uh, produce your own energy through solar, even if it's a minor amount, even if it's just some of your security lights outside your home, whatever, even if it's just one freaking table lamp, fine. Anything you do, it's a few pennies out of your ass. Now, I mentioned before in the other video, on the silver video on the other channel, that um, most of the taxes in the United States, all the sales taxes um, that are state sales taxes, they all came into being in the ni early 1930s to keep the governments of the state on a state level afloat. They're all going under. And the gasoline tax happened in 1932 while they made it illegal to make your own gasoline, which alcohol, which can be used as fuel in cars. You know, that was the prohibition time. Government actually is 99% of the problem why the economies go bad. There's no doubt about it. Um, and that's, that's true for everywhere. That's true for China, Russia, the United States, and Europe. Everywhere. Africa, South, South America, Saudi Arabia, you, you name it. Everywhere. That's Japan, you name it. Governments are 99% of the problem why the economies get s strangled. And I can tell you a lot of stories I'm not going to that I've seen government policies destroy major investments that I was working on that were actually <clears throat> in the billions of dollars and they just you know just screw these people up by changing government policies and lending and all this other garbage um, but the way to actually starve the beast is not and you know it's, it's, it's to actually give as little possible to the government um, you know, uh, personally right now, I see Tennessee as the most attractive state, although the state I'm in right now is, is pretty low on taxes. But uh, probably the best for taxation is Tennessee. Um, that might be a long-term move. I'm going to be going up there. But I was thinking about moving up there, getting the land real soon. But I'm not, I'm kind of flip-flopping and hesitating on it. But I might be doing that pretty soon. But I, I also realize to be as much as independent as possible and paying as little as possible into the system. Even in the state of New Jersey, if you have a small farm, you can register, uh, you can be taxed, the real estate taxes in New Jersey are high, sky high. You can actually go ahead and um, use your, uh, use that, as long as you have, I think, a $500 a year farm income or real estate uh, revenue, revenue, your real estate can be uh, registered as farmland, which is a tiny fraction of the real estate price of the real estate taxes in New Jersey, which are extremely high, no matter where the hell you are. That's a way around it. Some people are doing it, but very few people are doing it. Um, you can also, if you get an older vehicle in New Jersey, that's one of the worst states for taxation, believe it or not. You know, if you believe it, historical, go old, you get historical. It's very cheap. Insurance is cheap. You can get around things. I mean, I wouldn't want to live there, but it's you know, it's what you can do when you're in a bad situation. There's always ways around things. Uh, problem is, with most people, they always are victimized by advertising and having the latest and greatest and getting stuff they don't need, which is 
you know, a problem with that's gotten worse as each generation went by. I know the generation in the 1950s was not as tough-minded as the people in the 1930s. And when you go to the 60s and the 70s, less so. In the 90s, in the 80s and 90s, less so. And after 2000, forget it. Um, probably the expression one KGB, former KGB officer once said, um, they're waiting for the United States to be an overripe uh, tomato that's ready to fall off the vine or an overripe apple to be ready to fall off the vine. And it, it, I'd say the United States already is. It's uh, For the most part, you find most people don't do anything on their own. Um, the Russians generally are much tougher-minded and disciplined and um, can self-survive much better than a typical American. Um, that's just how it is. I'm not saying it because I'm uh, worshiping the Russians or, you know, I'm just telling you, I'm observing it as a fact. The less you got, the more the more you know how to get by with a little bit and the tougher you are. The more, the more self-reliant you are, the less you have. A lot of Russians don't even drive a car. Um, so, like, you know, when I'm making this video, if you have an English-speaking Russian that watches this video, obviously that, that person probably doesn't represent the typical Russian. There's no doubt about it because he's got the money for internet and he probably has a car or he or she has a car and all this other stuff. Uh, you know, I'll never reach the average Russian on his YouTube in a million years. I know that. Um, but be that as it may, um, I'm going to reach, reach a couple of them. But I, I realize the game that's going on. They're playing a game against East versus West to destroy each other, and then we're going to go play the New World Order and push for globalism. That's what Joel's saying. I already know that was the game from day one. Now, um, but there is a competition between three major centers. Who wants to be the top dog? The United States and the West is looking a bit for one angle. Russia's looking for another angle, and China's looking for another angle. Um, but there's so many shrewd games going on. Um, I was glad Joel actually went into this stuff, and it was an hour-long video, but uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to try to get more stuff out on this channel that's more practical-minded. Um, but, you know, I can tell you one thing is you probably really need to do what I need to do is worry about nuclear radiation fallout uh, because even though say there was ever a nuclear attack in the United States that the military would be the main targets there's going to be a lot of radiation problems throughout the whole damn country and it's not going to destroy the real estate but it's going to kill off the people and I did put out videos on how you can combat a lot of that stuff, it's like one is with activated charcoal which you take orally and of course not being exposed to it because I think it's the uh, the B waves or whatever it was, the B waves, the beta waves they can be stopped by anything, a piece of paper, as long as you got some kind of cover. But if you're underground, you got way more cover than if you're inside a building three feet thick, if you're underground, because it goes over you. Um, if you got warning, that's great. Uh, the other thing is vitamin C, which is an electron donor, if you can actually put, pump that into your veins, um, you can actually counteract a lot of that radiation. It's theoretically you can counteract all of it because it's vitamin C will quench all those free radicals from the radi radiation and make all the radiation inert because it's going all throughout the body. It's not a vitamin, it's actually a hormone and it's the most powerful uh, electron donor antioxidant we got. It'll work against rattlesnake bite and all kinds of microbial biological agents too if you get enough of it in your veins. But you're really Taking it orally isn't going to do that that much. It'll help a little bit, but you got to have intravenous. That would be another thing to learn how to do the little butterfly, and uh, how do you you can administer vitamin C. I don't know how to do that myself. I know how to I can buy the true liposomal vitamin C from Live On Labs, which is probably about as effective as the intravenous, maybe more so in some ways. But um, you got to have a load of that stuff on hand to make it make sure it works um, I you know one thing else too I think Trump is fairly legit he's probably more legit than Ronnie Reagan and you know I know Hillary Clinton was a piece of garbage that would have got us in World War III right away um, 
But I can tell you, behind the scenes, I think Trump is pretty much still control. He's too wealthy for too long not to be a puppet of somebody. And you can see right now, he's backing the hell out of NATO. I say screw NATO, man. I mean, I'm an American, man. I'm not a freaking NATO one. Okay? Huh. I got no allegiance to NATO. Screw NATO. And I got to say something about the people in the military, in our American military, which I was a member of. I was in for 13 years in the USMC. Anybody that's been in the Marine Corps, and I don't want to pick on the Marine Corps because I think they're the best ones, but anybody that's been in the, in the military a long time, and I'm talking like those lifers that have been there 20, 30 years, they're already a sellout. Even if they don't like something, they'll go along with it because they're getting their pay in bennies. Don't expect them to freaking stick their neck out. There's no doubt about it. Because I can tell you, they get rid of the independent-minded people first. Because I remember when I was in, um, they were saying, oh, no way am I ever getting passed because I was like uh, battalion high shooter on the rifle range, high first class PFTs, college education, all good papers. And here I got people getting hooked up that were unk on the rifle range, uh, six months like duty, and, you know, of course, you know, I got the wrong skin color maybe sometimes, but I don't have nothing against that kind of shit, but you know what I'm saying. Um, that's really what goes on. It's political correctness to the max in the Marine Corps, too. There, it's, it's that way more so in the Army. The Air Force is probably the worst of them all, and uh, it's in that way in the Navy. So I'm going to tell you that don't expect the American military to go fix shit because those guys, if they've been in a long time, forget it. And all the newbies that are in there, remember where where the gene pool's coming from, the millennials. It's not like we put a bunch of people from the 1930s in there today that live in, lived in a Great Depression and were sharecroppers and you know, hunting rabbits or something out to, to, to keep from starving. Those are not the type of military people we got in there today. They're pretty much, they got it pretty damn good compared to with fast past generations. Um, the Russian military, I think, is far tougher than the average in the American military um, when you're taken across the board. Now, if you look on YouTube, you might see the Navy SEAL against the Spetsnaz or some stuff like that. But that's that's elite forces. Overall, you're not going to see that if you took, you know, maybe the American military has got more technology and stuff and more, but uh, uh, as far as survivability out in the field, I think the, I definitely would give it to the Russians, no doubt. There's no doubt about that. But the game is... They're trying to pit the United States and Russia against each other. That's the New World Order game. And it's not just the West. Putin is hooked in with the financial system in the West. He's got, in Switzerland, oil-based uh, oil trading companies that are registered in Cyprus for tax breaks. The guy's loaded, and he basically works for the oligarchs. I don't think Vladimir Putin, just like in the United States, when we got a president over here, he's not the guy that really runs the show. There's a group of people behind the scenes that run the show. But I can tell you that's the same thing I think with Putin. I think he's just the guy you see out there. If you're a Russian, you might agree with that or not agree with that. But he's he's he, but you know, I can tell you this about Putin. He's a reasonable guy. He is. I mean, I'm not talking like he's Santa Claus. He's a reasonable guy. I would definitely side with Putin over Hillary Clinton in a two-second, I mean, in split-second flat. But, I mean, I don't mean I'm a Putin worshiper and I'm anti-American. I just realized that Hillary Clinton's 110% anti-American every which way from Sunday, and she's a piece of garbage to the max. But that doesn't make me a Trump worshiper either. But like I said, the only way you're going to freaking stay independent is to be independent and starve the beast, which means starve the government as much as possible. And, you know, you're probably better off working less hours or maybe even less days and using that time to do projects on your own because 
You'd be surprised at the amount of money you could save by doing stuff on your own versus having buying new something or new this or new that or just being fancy and showy off you whatever you want to be in a show off. And it also teaches you how to be self-reliant. Now the Russians probably do this all the time, but then again, anybody gets too much money, they automatically, a lot of times, they um, get on a new treadmill where they spend it to show off. And then you lose a lot of your independence by doing that. You want to be independent. And I think with the deal with um, what's coming up, I think what Joel was saying about, you know, the financial collapse and all this crap, crap being a complete, not really true, not not really going to happen. I am not 110% sure about that. See, uh, my my opinion on a upcoming financial collapse, quote unquote, is a semi-collapse, like a severe depression, a uh, severe recession or depression, like something, like nothing ever totally collapses. Even if the banks shut down for a week or two, they they they, they reop they reopen, you know. Um, I think there's going to be quite a bit of a devaluing of the dollar and the standard of living in the United States. That's what I think is going to happen. Now, if you want to call that a collapse, collapse, I don't know. But if you're already self-reliant, it ain't going to matter to you. Um, that's why the Russians are probably in far better condition for any kind of problems that come up than the Americans, almost without a doubt. But don't trust, you know, I mean, I'm not going to give you any names or anything, but don't trust the guy that goes on YouTube that's, you know, good English-speaking Russian, and he's telling you all about what's going on in Russia and how he this and that. The guy is probably full of, he's probably working for the bad guy somewhere. He's probably working for the New World Order. You're not going to hear from an average Russian on YouTube. You're pretty much not going to. But I'm, I'm here to tell you, man, I, got, I, I respect the average Russian. And I'm not saying I hate Putin, but I know what he is, okay? You understand? I know, the, I know the guys on the top that run Russia. There's a lot of crooks that run the whole damn country. And they own more wealth than even the crooks that we got over here in Wall Street. But that doesn't mean I like these guys over here in Wall Street, and I can't stand the guys in the medical profession either, the pharmaceutical crooks. But uh, one of your biggest concerns, if we ever have a, you know, a third world war, quote unquote, and they take they take out the military in the United States, the civilian population is probably going to be targeted mainly with biological, because they're going to want to get rid of as many people as possible and keep the infrastructure in place intact. They don't want to destroy all the buildings and the roads and the bridges and the tunnels and the electric lines and the power lines and whatever's there. They don't want that. They don't want that to happen. They want the people to go away so they can move in and take over it, whatever, whoever they want to take over it. So what's the slickest way to doing that? Biological. That's why you might want to look at some of my channel on some of the stuff that I talk about because I think so many things I got on my channel probably can cure anything even biological agents could fight that stuff no problem so I'm gonna put a video I'm gonna put a link down here a comment and a link you might want to look at this it's about an hour long and um, the guy is on a ball I think the video was actually two years old even though it was re-uploaded you know it's and um, He's, 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 I think he's telling, he's, he's the best one I ever seen in the alternative media, Joel Skozin. So, anyway, over now.